So look who I just ran into. We're camping at the same place. I was camping out at Rath Trevor, as you know, the last little while. What's up, and guess guys? who showed up? Yeah, there he is, Chrome and Emmy. <laughs> Ooh, uh, fantastic, eh? That is wonderful. Oh, and we have to get the star of the show, right? Mr. Cruz. Yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah, it's great to see you again. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much for doing a tiny house tour. No problem, my, man. It, it turned out great. It did. It turned out fantastic. And uh, I'm uh, so appreciative of that. And uh, I love it. And I watch it all the time <laughs> myself because it was so wonderful. But, no, this is great to meet you again. And... Uh, it was great. As soon as I pulled in and I seen that over there, I'm like, man, there's only one of those around. <laughs> yeah, it's very Ooh, unique, right? Fire. Very, very unique, yeah. That's a beautiful fire. Yeah, it shows you up now. <laughs> it was getting dark and now I can see you. <laughs> That's fantastic. The key to starting a good guy in my fire is throw the poop bag in first. Yeah. <laughs> jokes, jokes. Yeah. Jokes, yeah. I didn't use my poop bag as fire starter. <laughs> He's filming me. I'm like, I'm like, the key to starting a good van life fire is throw the poop bag in first. <laughs> exactly. That's what I do. Look at that thing. <laughs> I think we all do that, don't we? You know, that just goes with the territory. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off now and just have a social visit. So you guys go away and leave me alone, right? Okay. <laughs> Ciao for now. Well, that was really cool uh, last night, running into Chrome again while we're hanging out at the campsite down here at Rath River Beach. That was really cool. Awesome to meet up with him again. And it was a really special treat to meet uh, Emmy for the very first time. Really wonderful. And uh, we just sat around the campfire for a while, ch chatting for, well, probably at least an hour or so. And we lost track. I lost track of time. But anyway, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, doing uh meeting up with chrome again and uh, like i said meeting emmy for the first time it was really great special treat for me meeting emma emmy but anyway um basically uh we've been hanging out at uh rath trevor beach down here for a bit and uh they got like oysters and shellfish all over the place everywhere out on the beach out there but uh the problem is it's not legal to go and harvest any oysters down here or any shellfish and uh, butter clams, any of that, down here at uh, the campsite uh, beach area. So what I'm doing today is I'm, uh, I got an invitation from uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brandon from BC Food Adventures, has invited me up to his, uh, where he has an oyster lease up in Fanny Bay. So that's what we're going to do today we're going to take off head up to fanny day because i've got a real hankering and craving for oysters now that i know they're down here at the beach sitting there and i can't touch them it's really playing on me and i haven't had fresh oysters uh picked and shucked in a very very long time so that's the plan today we're gonna head up to um, uh, fanny bay and uh go uh check out uh uh, Brandon's oyster lease on uh, the beach there and grab some oysters and come da back and uh, hopefully cook them up for you and show you a nice really nice special uh, oyster recipe I've got going on so anyway why don't you come along for the ride and uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you soon okay ciao So I just showed you down in this beach here and actually this is a, 
a different part of the bay here and it's not part of the oyster lease and everything so what we do is we come back over here it's um there's the point straight ahead and as we come around the point here we get uh this is where uh, BC Food Adventures has their oyster lease on this side. So we can't pick on that other side. We pick on this side and look at this. Look at this whole thing. Look at the uh, gap there through the, I think that's an island probably. There's a gap through there. Just a beautiful, beautiful place, like water all around you. Like I say, we're out on a point, so there's water, water everywhere. <laughs> so let's go down there and go uh, picking the oysters in the uh, proper spot down in here. Let's get going. Mm. 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 I'm over there with Brandon. This is his oyster lease down here. Yeah. So uh, let's go see what he's got in the bucket already. There's a, unfortunately it's a, as best as it gets on high tide. Oh my I'm God, look at that. About two minutes and he's got most of a bucket full. Wow, look at those. I'm gonna enjoy yeah. eating these suckers. Oh my God, that's a whole bunch. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is fantastic down here, Brandon. Yeah, Beautiful think place. Think of a garden bed uh, where you plant vegetable. We have something like a oyster or clam bed where we plant all the seeds for the oyster and clams. And then we have a netting that we put on top to keep the birds away and keep them from floating around. So we peg them down. Okay. And then they grow underneath the netting and then when they get big enough, you know, you remove the netting and then that's where you harvest uh, mm -hmm. the manila clams and the oysters. So that's wild. Yeah, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. And most of the, the, the main season is during the summer. Okay. Yeah, from uh, July, August, September is the prime season of growing. But in the off season, we also do it, but not as in big volume. That's a fascinating yeah. process. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Here we go. We got quite a good amount of oysters there. There's ice on the bottom there, so it's not as many as it looks, but we've got plenty for a couple of good meals, really good hefty meals. So, all right, so let's go back uh, to the truck and uh, get home and take these... Uh, home and chuck them and everything and make a good oyster meal excellent let's uh, head out here so here we go we got our oysters from fanny bay here uh i had an, a proper oyster shucker i had it for many years and now i can't find it when i need to shuck oysters it's pretty bizarre but i got some tools out here to hopefully do the job i've tried one out but here's what to do with the shucker you got to watch these edges here. They can be razor sharp and you can slice your hand really easily. Um, but these ones actually aren't as bad as the ones I've done in the past. So I got a good grip on it. What you do is you take your shucker. This is kind of a shucker tool uh, so far. <laughs> anyway, you take it and stick it in the back end here. And hold that as tight as you can. And then you just kind of wiggle it so it gets inside and pops it open like ah uh, this one's having a little trouble doing it the first one went super smooth but this one is not happening very good so uh, i might have to get my gloves out to grip it farther but uh, oh my god this is tight i've got them wedged in the table here the oysters wedged in the table there got this one and what i'm going to do is i just stick that in the back side of the oyster there I'm just going to tap it with a hammer a bit. There we go. It's open. There we go. Pull it open like that. Now you hold it like this. And the, uh, the oyster is stuck in on both sides by this muscle there and the muscle there on each side of the shell. So you want to separate that from one shell. And then you go inside there and find where the muscle is on the other side. And just slice it off the shell 
right like that. So your oyster is fully intact. And sometimes you can get a piece of shell in there. Just make sure they're very clean when you go to cook them. So there's the oyster there. Bingo. It's out. So let's get cracking. Cracking. Okay. We'll do the same thing there. I just dropped that in there. There we go. That works better than a shucker. Proper shucker. So there we go again. Like that. Pop them out. Okay. That separated easy from the muscle there. That one's okay, but the other one, we're just going to make sure so we don't uh, waste any good oyster and chop it in half and just get on that muscle right there, right at the shell, and then snip it out like that. There you go. So these are going really good and easy. So let's have fun and uh, shuck some oysters here. And I can't wait to make my recipe and eat them. There we go. Another one there. Pull them apart. Oh, those muscles can be really strong. Those two muscles there. So there we go again. Just so you didn't, in case you didn't see it the first time, there, get, separate that one. Then move your uh, oyster around to the, there's the muscle there. So just kind of get underneath. There you go. Separate it like that. There you go. Now, a lot of people, I don't do this. I tried it once when I was young and I'm not a big fan of it, but you can take them out like that and you can uh, just, uh, there's the oyster and you can actually pop them in your mouth and swallow them whole raw like that. A lot of people go on the beach, they crack them open and swallow them down just like that and throw the shell on the beach, but we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> I kind of a little paranoid about, uh, you know, bacteria and stuff. So I always cook mine and I cook them thoroughly. So let's get shucking the rest of these so we can go and make some meals whoops <laughs> this one's going to be a little trickier i think it's bigger so let's oh boy let's try it this way get in there get in there <laughs> so sometimes if it doesn't work that well uh i'm going to put it in the side edge instead of the back end and just drop that in the side this way there you see, separated a bit, there you go. Look at the size of that oyster, that's a beauty. So it already separated from the muscle by itself. Didn't have to do that part, but check this out. I'm gonna get under that muscle here. This is a beauty, a big beauty. There, separated that. There, look at the size of that oyster. That's a nice one, that's gonna cook up real good. And, be a big mouthful. <laughs> so there you go. Let's shuck some more oysters here. Moving on, moving on. Now, another one, I found this one. This got some really sharp edges here. You don't want to cut yourself at all. And so I'm going to try in the back end. And if that doesn't work as easy, I'm going to have to get in the edge there somehow. So let's do this. Here we go, here we go. Let's get inside. Oh, and there's the, the bucket of oyster shells that I shucked and threw the shells in the bucket to dispose of later. So let's get in the house here and get these on the grill. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Kent's Kitchen and Cooking with Kent again. <laughs> so we're doing the uh, oysters here. I uh, promised you I'd cook some up for you and uh, what we're going to do is uh, my famous breaded oysters. So what I do first here is I uh, take the oysters here. I, first of all, let me say that I've got uh, flour here. I use white flour there. I use some bread crumbs and I use some cornflake crumbs. And so what I do first is I take the uh, oysters. Let me get a big one if I can. Take the oysters and I dip them into the egg. Just get them like kind of wet with the egg. Then they go in the flour like this. It gets a little messy on my fingers and that goes into the flour a bit. And then it goes back into the egg. Get a little more egg on them, not too much. Then goes into the crumbs. And then you mix the crumbs on them. Let them uh, 
get all over there and get a nice good coating on there and then they're done they go on the plate here with the other oysters here so there we go so these are all breaded now and i gotta pour some on there and let it soak in a bit and uh that's okay it doesn't matter if it's on the plate there and uh, that's how we do that i gotta wipe my hands now and then we just keep doing that one by one get an oyster whoops <laughs> slippery little suckers get an oyster put it in the egg uh i got egg the whole egg in there not just the egg white whole egg get it in there kind of drip it off make sure it's not too much and uh, shake your flour up so it's nicely loose put a little flour not so much a little egg again then drip it straight into the breadcrumbs again like that you can just shake it on there and then pour it on and stuff and then uh, hopefully there's lots on there and doesn't lose any while you uh, drop it on the plate there and then you just keep doing that put some on top there again just keep doing that until all your oysters are done and ready and then we'll fry them in a pan in, in uh, extra virgin olive oil. So let's uh, finish up all these eggs, or <laughs> sorry, oysters, and uh, then we can get on with this recipe. Okay, here we go. We got all the oysters breaded and ready to go on the plate here, ready to be fried up. So let's get cooking these suckers. They are going to be fantastic and delicious. Let's get the pan going and here we go. Okay, into the hot oil they go, one by one. Shake off a little bit of the crumbs. There we go. Sizzling away in the hot oil. They're kind of going to be deep fried. Deep fried, there's a bunch of little ones and big ones. All sizes of oyster. Got to get them all in here somehow, and then we will watch them cook. There we go, when they're nicely browned on each side, like that, or on that side, then you flip them over. Got to get them nicely browned. That one's uh, just about fully brown. And uh, I don't like them undercooked at all. I don't want to make sure nothing's uh, undercooked. I want to make sure they're well cooked. And they have a much nicer texture that way inside. As well as you don't have any problems with uh, being undercooked in any way, shape, or form. So just check them all one by one. Make sure they're ready to be flipped. And then you toast them on the, that side and you toast them on the other side as well. So let's flip all these over there and get them rock and roll in there. There we go, we've got them all flipped over now and they're all nicely browned on the one side. I like to do uh, a little beyond uh, light brown, I like to do kind of a medium brown like this one here. These ones, so they're well enough cooked and like I say nothing is undercooked at home and they got a much nicer meatier um, center kind of thing and uh, a much nicer uh, texture when you bite into them that so we'll just brown them really well like this that like this on the other side and uh, they'll be very very nicely cooked and well well cooked and they're gonna taste amazing just amazing I just know that so we're gonna cook for another few minutes here and 
that oil and I gotta turn around because we're on a bit of a slant so we'll make sure I get the oil all around each and every one of them. So there we are, they're nicely browned on both sides and I flipped these a third time. You can see some of them got fairly dark on the bottom but that's okay. That's kind of the way I like them and they're uh, nicely just golden brown on the top like that. But they're thoroughly cooked right through. No problem with any um, being undercooked and, you know, um, being <laughs> kind of bad or something like that. Because they're thoroughly cooked right through and uh, they're going to have a really nice uh, meaty texture. I can just tell. So they're all done. Turn the heat off. And we're just going to place them all on the plate right now. And then let them cool down a bit until they're just not hot but very warm and just perfect temperature to eat so let's do that all right there we go we have them all nicely laid out in the plate there they're gonna sit and cool down let's wash up this pan and uh, clean it up in the meantime and by the time we're done cleaning the pan and everything they will be nice and uh, just the right temperature to mow down on them so Let's get on with this pan and come back and do eat the oysters. Ciao. So there we go. The frying pan is clean and the stove is put away and cleaned. And uh, it's time to just sit down and mow down on these uh, oysters here. Let's do it. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Here are those oysters. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Look at those. Mm. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Cooked to perfection. Cooked to perfection. Yeah, these are fantastic. They're, they're well done enough, but they're not overdone, overcooked. They're just perfect and have this really nice meaty texture that's all i keep saying is meaty texture but it's hard to describe them unless you've had them and um they're just amazing just amazing mm. 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 there's the little baby ones <laughs> mm. they're fantastic fantastic if you've had oysters you probably know what i mean if especially if you had the the breaded oysters like this they're one of my favorite ways to do them. A lot of people just steam them and then uh, eat them with, I don't know, lemon or some kind of sauce of some sort. But I like them breaded like this. This is probably my favorite way and one of the best ways to have them. But they're fantastic. They're fantastic. Mm. Oh, wow. I haven't had homemade breaded oysters in a very long time. I haven't had any oysters in a long time, but... Mm. Homemade is always the best way to go. Always. Mm. They are just delicious. I can't even describe to you what they're like. You have to try it yourself. So I don't know if you uh, don't mind some seafood. Like shellfish and stuff like that. Uh, go grab yourself some. and uh, At a good reputable place where they sell them. Or you can pick them like I was today. And uh, try them out. I'm going to try the recipe I showed you. And uh, you'll just love it. You'll just love it. I'm pretty sure of that. Mm. Oh, my God. These are delicious. Wow. Mm. But oysters, I, I haven't had them for many, 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 many years. Probably at least 17 to 20 years. But I don't always have them very often. I usually might have them, uh, like, on the, on the most... Um, I have them once a year, probably at the very most, or least, I guess I should say, and uh, maybe every couple of years or something. I don't have them very often, but when I've got a real craving for them, I, I love to get a batch and cook them up real perfect like this and then just dive in. And then I'm good to go for maybe a year or more sometimes, maybe only six months. It depends on how I feel. This is fantastic and so wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad I got invited up there to uh, um, Brandon's um, <laughs> oyster lease property there on the beach there. Um, 
that um, he owns and operates through uh, BC Food Adventures. So go check them out online, BC Food Ad Adventures, and, uh, you know, see if you can find a spot to get uh, um, a nice uh, batch of oysters from a, a, a good beach or just a good uh, deli or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to mow down on these and enjoy. The girls are all flaked out. Angel moved over there. They've been running around having a great day at the beach and all over the place. Driving up and down the island and that, and they're all tuckered out. <laughs> so, here we go. You enjoy, and bon appétit. Mm. 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 <laughs> 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 